This video discusses various aspects of the implementation of ICT in PBL-based learning environments. There are three main topics covered. First is the effect of ICT and PBL in student and teacher engagement. The themes that emerge from this are how students extend their own learning through ICT, the platform ICT provides in PBL environments as an engaging learning tool, and how it promotes self-directed learning. The second topic is the relationship between ICT and individual school cultures and its reflection on academia. This involves different educational philosophies amongst school environments and educators, the perceptions of this within academia, and the contradictions between the two. The third topic is the implications of embedding ICT within PBL environments in terms of student academic performance and other skills acquisition. This includes how ICT is utilised to assist improving student learning, the balance between ICT and conventional teaching methods, and other non-academic skills gained in such learning environments. Current literature shows a variety of results on the three topics we cover. It is generally agreed amongst researchers that integrating ICT in PBL environments can be very beneficial in many aspects. However, the methods of implementation and in which ways ICT can benefit PBL depend on multiple factors, and it is important to note that widespread use of ICT is not uniformly endorsed. In terms of student and teacher engagement, current research demonstrates that ICT can empower students in their learning by giving them the opportunity to self-pace their work via the student-directed nature of PBL. Student engagement is further enhanced by ICT by developing independent and critical thought. It also allows greater opportunities for students to express themselves and make their learning more relevant and applicable to everyday life. However, the fluent nature of engagement means that the effects vary from school to school and also within individual classrooms. Some teachers also argue that ICT can have a negative impact on students. However, there is not much research that focuses on student perceptions to substantiate this claim. School culture itself seems to be an element many researchers omit. It was found in the literature review that most studies involved multiple schools in large geographic areas or with similar demographics in the same area, rather than focusing on a single whole school context. The reality is that everyday school environments influence how ICT and PBL is utilized in which aspect of the educational framework, and this seems to have a very unclear definition in academia. In addition, there seems to be little research conducted on how school culture impacts the efficacy of ICT integration in PBL environments, since there is a variety of perspectives on education, resources and pedagogies expressed by varying school cultures and individual teachers. In particular, many schools focus on student performance and building academic skills. Studies on the integration of ICT in PBL settings in terms of student performance and skills also demonstrate a variety of results. Many researchers recommend a limited integration of ICT in PBL settings, and they recommend the continuation of conventional teaching methods. According to this theory, ICT should not be in the centre of teaching, but rather a supporting element in PBL settings. The ease of access to information via ICT and its implications are also widely studied. It is argued that this leads to an inquiry-based mindset and also encourages sharing ideas and knowledge within classmates as well as collaborative projects. Integrating ICT in PBL environments was also demonstrated to improve learning behaviour in addition to increasing academic performance. This was achieved without hindering student performance and in fact assisted students in learning on a deeper level. Therefore, we can say that more research is required in the area of ICT and its effects, especially directly on students and teachers that experience them firsthand. Through the themes that emerge in the literature review, we constructed a series of data collection methods to have an idea of how the benefits of ICT in PBL environments manifest in contemporary Australian schools. Data collection for these various topics revealed several insights. A good example is the investigation regarding academic achievement. The observations involved in this section focus on the level of student performance and collateral skills gained in each lesson, as well as how students engage with the ICT elements. This includes the length of engagement in each component, the thought processes involved, and how students engage with each ICT component within PBL boundaries. It was found that ICT components do not automatically make a lesson engaging for students but are able to increase student performance if the contents of the learning experiences are engaging. 
students exhibited higher levels of performance in activities they found engaging that also contained ICT, compared to those with I ICT. However, they did not engage in ICT components on a higher level if they did not find learning experiences relevant, especially among students of lower academic ability. Therefore, this contradicts several aspects of the academic literature regarding learning behaviour and deeper learning. However, this is contrasted when analysing student and teacher engagement with these pedagogies in comparison to our literature review. This was achieved through interviewing various teachers to assess their opinion and experience with ICT and PBL in the classroom. The results demonstrate that although early career teachers understood the potential of these pedagogies, older staff are resistant to ICT, stating that technology is too difficult for them to learn and implement in their classes, and that they don't see the potential of ICT or is against their educational philosophies. Although there was consistent agreement about the negative aspects of ICT in a PBL context regarding its misuse by students, most teachers affirmed that there was a need due to the practical and holistic applications of these approaches such as collaboration, self-directed learning and problem solving. This data was largely similar to the preliminary research in our literature review. Yet overall, there was an affirmation that ICT should complement other skills while greater teacher familiarity, planning, instruction and education to implement these approaches was deemed to be the most effective strategy, which has not been properly addressed by academics. In relation to the previous topics, the school culture aspect of this research was just as diverse. It involved observations of how ICT and PBL are used within individual classes, and interviews with educators regarding the use of these pedagogies and how they think it fits within their school's culture. One of the major findings was confirmation to why there are significant omissions within academic literature. Even within this single school, there was debate whether ICT and PBL were integrated into the school's environment. In the interviews, some teachers agreed that it was, noting its benefits, pastoral use, and how it promotes professional collegiality. Others thought they were just resources, and others, again, thought they were part of educational culture broadly. This correlates to issues not only regarding this omission, but the definition of school culture within academia itself. The fact that one interviewee believed that the school's culture was transitory between ICT and literacy development further emphasizes this fact. Numerous observations and interviews also noted there was a tension within ICT-based PBL culture being consistently present in these learning environments due to subsequent classroom management concerns. This correlates with issues regarding students' academic success and engagement with content in other research areas. Our combined results reveal that ICT-based PBL is more effective for certain learners, educators, pedagogies, and contexts. This is in terms of student-teacher engagement and learning across a whole school environment and culture, as well as academic achievement. Clearly, this data has contrasted with features within academia, with certain aspects showing some consistencies within the larger discourse of educational research. Based on the academic literature and analysis of combined data, an intervention was initiated for our own classrooms. It involved the creation of a scaffold which assesses and supports the purposeful use of PBL-based ICT regardless of school culture and learning environments. The first step of the intervention will involve measuring the merits of the ICT components of the PBL system, noting its benefits, its achievability and applicability for learning context. This is based on supporting academic literature regarding academic achievement and student engagement, as well as the data collected noting discrepancies between school cultures and teacher-student engagement with ICT-based PPL. The following step will involve the teacher learning the ICT aspect through gaining an understanding and expertise of ICT capabilities, and noting the likelihood of achieving this proficiency, based on the individual educator. This reflects the need for educators to have a greater understanding of ICT, as noted within our interviews. The third step develops the student's understanding of the PBL-based ICT. This will be done through scaffolding and explicit instruction, which addresses observations regarding issues about engaging the low-ability students, while acknowledging literature describing the potential benefits of PBL-based ICT for academic achievement and a deeper understanding of content. 
This will also be informed by the expectations established by the educator, due to concerns raised in our data collection by both sets of interview data. The teacher then places the targeted ICT-based PBL with individual lessons and learning sequences. However, it will only be implemented if it is balanced with non-ICT and PBL pedagogies, if it provides feedback for accessible material, as well as fitting within the context of the learning environment. This, based on academia reflecting school cultures, balanced ICT-based pedagogies, as well as similar insights from observations during data collection. This will be followed by a period of data collection and analysis of student work, observations and interviews, which will then inform a critical reflection, redesign and re-implementation of the scaffold if needed, reflecting the cyclical educational practice. This scaffold is shown in detail here. However, through designing this intervention, a new action research proposal was initiated, namely to what specific factors makes ICT-based PBL purposeful and effective within learning environments. This involves a number of subordinate questions, such as understanding what is perceived as effective PBL-based ICT, the role of entire educational communities in implementing the pedagogies, and a case study into ICT-based PBL as a means to differentiate content and support academic success of the students. This research will be conducted over a number of different individual classrooms, including our own. Ethics statements and consent forms will be provided to students and educators in order to ensure ethical research practice, clarity and disclosure for the study. To answer these research questions, we have proposed that the data collected will range from various mediums, including qualitative observations of individual lessons and artifacts like quantitatively assessed student work. Furthermore, interviews and surveys of both students and teachers will be conducted to gain deeper perspectives and insights regarding these issues. The scaffold implemented in the intervention will also be an analyzed artifact in this process, along with other school and teacher documentation. This data will be compared, coded, and analyzed to fully comprehend both qualitative and quantitative perspectives, and triangulated accordingly, thereby creating clear and comprehensive categories and themes. Through this data, we will be able to reflect on what specific resources, pedagogies and ICT-based PBL elements that were effective for various outcomes and to address varying student learning needs. A greater understanding of how these strategies promote student academic success, allow collaboration amongst educators and the wider school community, as well as be reflective of the intervention scaffold this community has implemented. This forms part of the redesign and re-implementation processes associated with the action research process, the intervention strategy, as well as educational practice. In summary, our collaborative action research study has addressed many aspects, omissions, and varying interpretations within the literature and educational practice regarding PBL and ICT. The data collection methodologies have highlighted discrepancies and similarities in academia, while showing revelations regarding student-teacher engagement, academic success, and how a whole school culture utilizes PBL and ICT pedagogies and resources.